are going to go to some of my dumpy rentals and really inspect and see, did my crew do what they're supposed to? Did the tenants finally leave? And do I have rat infested pits? I don't know. So you're gonna have to hang out with me today on today's video, see what the truth of the matter is. If you like this kind of content, make sure you like the video and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. So, all right, let's jump in the van. Let's go to town. So my crew sent, told me, come take a look at this one. We've had two properties with blown pipe. For reference, it was negative 35 degrees with wind chill in Ohio the other day. My pipes burst in my house. The pipes burst in my brother's apartment complex. And then we've had a couple rentals with bursted pipe. This being one of them. And uh, this is one of them. I hope this is rainwater. Rehab crew told me, come take a look at this. I hear like water hissing. <laughs> the city called and actually said, hey, you got a mess here. We're shutting your water off. So it's going to be bad. I know it is. It's just the upsettingness about all of these places. This is a coronavirus deal. I had to evict these people or I was in the process of evicting these people and it was held off essentially for a year due to, you know, health epidemic. See how bad this place is. And it's this bad. It only affected the downstairs unit primarily. So if you'll remember on the last walkthrough for this one, we, I would have said, at least I don't have to replace the ceiling here. And that's now replacing the ceiling here. So we were already at $10,000 on this place. So now we're at 3,500 to four grand, 14 to $15,000, I'm guessing, just to tear out the ceiling in there. But that's what today's going to be about in this video. We're going to go through and look at several of my places, come up with a repair, repair plan for 2023. Now with coronavirus being over and with the interest rates being high, housing, I don't think is going to come down rent wise in price. Overall market pricing, I'm sure it's going to come down a little bit, but there's too much demand for rentals. I posted a trailer, which we're going to look at, I think here in a little bit. I posted a trailer. I had 50 applications or 50 people show interest in it. We rented it. When I acquired the trailer, we started off at $300 a month and we're now at $800 a month. So that's how much rent went up for a house in this small town outside Columbus, Ohio. We're in Kingston for reference today. So I don't think that uh, any, there's any water damage here. So uh, to be honest with you, the damage isn't as bad as I thought it would be. That's still solid. I'm not feeling any mushy floors. Yeah, the floor was this this wavy to begin with. I don't know why we just didn't rip out all the floors and put brand new subfloor in, but that sounds like something stupid I would have done when I bought it. Just not actually fix the problem. You got straw up there, the world's best insulation. The rest of that's blown in. Let's get upstairs, the much nicer unit. Um, we're going to make sure that there's no residual water in here so there's not going to be any mold issues but we did a video two weeks ago where i walked through the upstairs unit with my contractor justin and went over the plan for it this one's going to need ten to fifteen thousand dollars to fix after it's all said and done the upstairs one by my estimate was only going to run me five thousand so it's just the easier one to deal with i don't know why we have these are engineering drawings well now why would they do that the water meter's right here oh my goodness watch out guys oh there goes my big giant great plan and not to uh, getting my feet soaking wet into today's video. So yeah, this is... I would take a guess, say my net loss due to coronavirus at this point is probably two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars. And I also can't imagine that I'm the only landlord in the United States that has a net loss. I'm sitting at this second at a net loss of between two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars minimum. I didn't do the meet Kevin thing and get a bunch of government stimulus money. They did. I did take an EIDL loan for thirty five thousand dollars, which I repay at like one hundred seventy five bucks over the next thirty years. So it's a loan. It wasn't a gift to me. The only gift money I got from the federal government was if my tenants going to the federal or the, the government and asking for money for rent. So this is where the leak would have been. One of these supply lines, it looks like there's PEX running into there. Those were PVC and CPVC lines that are directly under here. So it was just in the ceiling of the below unit and that furnace. I mean, this place looks the same. It's the same crappy self as it is. This is the Menards receipt unit that I spent gobs of money on and got screwed by a contractor. Again, it's a recurring theme of people stealing money from me. All right. So let's go on to the next thing. So we're here at this house, number one. It's pretty much all done, except for there is a monster in the closet up there that I've been requested by my rehab team to come fix. So we are going to hunt down monsters in this place. So you guys remember what it looked like last time? Tell me what you think. Certainly smells nicer. I don't detect uh, cigarette smoke or urine. All I smell is the wonderful smell of paint and new carpeting. So we'll do a real quick tour before we deal with the monster upstairs. Cabinets. Oh, we did a glass 
glass tile backsplash. Man, this looks nice. Oh, this looks so good. This would have, will have been $500 rental. And in the future, it will be, I'm guessing, probably an $800 rental. Thanks inflation and coronavirus. Bathroom is pretty much unchanged. It was a good bathroom to begin with, considering the construction of this house. It's not big, but we had a brand, we have a brand new shower tub in there, everything of that nature. Originally had probably a $17,000 rehab budget on this. I think we're going to probably be at 25 after it's all said and done. We haven't focused yet on the exterior. This is actually as best Asbestos late side, asbestos tile siding, which I'm sure you hear asbestos and everybody starts freaking out. It's actually really good siding. And as long as you preserve it and you don't grind it up, it, it'll last forever. The siding's already 80 years old, still going strong. It just looks ugly. So I want to have it refinished. We've got a really good coating. The floors are solid, not wavy anymore. This is plaster and lath. That's not good. And yeah, waiting for our monster. They could have or should have. That's pl a plaster ceiling. It's a waste of time. Oh well, guys. At least we did a nice walkthrough inspection on this house. Let's go through some more closets real quick. I looked in the bathroom earlier, so on to the next disaster. I noticed on the second floor, one of the windows is open. I think it's open. That's not the attic, that's the upstairs bedroom. I'm saying I'm super concerned right now, but I did see the door open. I drove by earlier. Oh, we got new countertops in here. That's cool. Got a new dishwasher. They need to seam these up a little. Not a little. They need to seam them up a lot. Man, that looks terrible. I'll start taking pictures of my complaints. Last time I was here, I felt like this one would be more, would probably be quicker to turn over than 7th Street is. So back, they put a new door in, so we're, I'm happy about that. In there, plus general cleaning. And what's going to be interesting is this rental is going to have different kinds of tenants than the other one that we were at today. Oh my goodness, they've got a laundry chute here. How fun would it be for me to like put one of my kids down in there? Take a look at that. Just have the fire department on call. I think it goes to the first floor. I think it goes to where the kitchen is. A little bit of water damage there for the shutoffs. See if the attic is still, yeah, the attic's still crap. Take a look at this. This is the one with the window that looked like it was open. I wonder why they have used oil-based paint in here. That's either oil-based paint or varnish. I don't think it's the floors because all the floors are supposed to be were supposed to be done weeks ago. I can hear the heat on. Homes of different eras definitely have different smells to them because so many homes have a smell that's indicative of when they were built. I think it's the flooring because we went on a vacation for two weeks, came home, and I came to the realization my home smells like my grandma's home on my dad's side. And incidentally enough, both homes were built right in the 1950s. So it's like the standard 1950s smell, which is a good, great smell. I didn't realize my house had that smell. Uh, let's go look in the basement and see how they're doing. I think they've got all of the, everything we've done. I think we had to put a new heater in, hot water heater. Oh, okay, cool. I really love this basement. Here's new pecs. I'm pretty sure we're still convinced that the heater here, or the hot water heater is still good. Lethal doses. The Miamisburg derailment points up dangers of chemical transport. 1986. So I was listening to year old. What thing? Somebody's been here summoning something. Why? It's like these church display cases. I feel like my grandma's little hometown Methodist church at this point with all the wood paneling. We still don't have a door here. Well, no one got into it, so that's good. All right, well, close to being done. So close, guys. But this is costing me $800 a month month and loan payments till it's rented or till we refinance. That's not fun. The expectation for me was to make two loan payments and we will be at five loan payments of 800 bucks a month. $2,400 difference of debt service on this I didn't expect to pay. All right. What? Oh, that's it. Cool. That's neat. So my business partner actually took this disaster a lot better than I thought he would have. When a house has the potential of bed bugs, roaches, what a filth. Absolute filthy, disgusting mess. I really, it is not in my heart to put that on any other person. I think if my read my text messages right, we're supposed to be like 90% of the way there on trash. Can you hear that on the microphone? Yeah. That's a giant rat. <laughs> and the longer I'm in here, the higher chance of having bed bugs we, we have. So let's, we'll get out of here. <laughs> Hey, they like the same kind of monster. The reason I'm doing videos today is like, I used to have this, these recurring nightmares, let's say. I would always have to go back to working at a warehouse. This is after I got in real estate. Didn't have those dreams anymore after I started investing in real estate because I felt like my job security was sure. Recently, I have started having similar dreams of having to go back to work at a warehouse. And it hit me that I'm losing right now between 10 and $12,000 on my rental portfolio. So what we're doing today is I'm going through a bunch of these houses that are supposed to be done or they're supposed to be in a different stage and then they are so this one i had requested it to be fully trashed out three weeks ago does it look trashed out 
No. Just talk to my maintenance guy and ask him, why is it not done yet? And his statement is, well, the, tra the transmission on your dump truck's out. I had no clue. So we're gonna go down to Chillicothe to look at the next places and figure out um, with those what's going on. And hopefully we don't have any giant rats down there too. Southern Ohio is no different than anywhere else in the United States. There's a lot of people that need a housing. My manager said there's a box drain issue over here, which I agree. So there's some water infiltration and mold. So I'll take a picture of it. We'll go up to the upstairs bedroom on this wall and take a look real quick. Just see where we're at with it. We need to do some paint touch up. This is one where they, the tenant back there, rent deposit, looking at the carpet, the carpet's all stained. Refrigerator looks filthy. A lot of dingy, crappy things. We need a new, we'll need a new vanity in here. Um, pipe leak, ceiling in here needs redone. I mean, just lots of crappy stuff that shouldn't exist. They were getting 850 a month out of this unit. That's not worth 850 at this rate. I do see a lot of dead roaches. So I'm happy about that yeah there's just there's gonna be a lot of stuff in here those are dead roaches i don't see any live ones so that's good well that's what we've been dealing with fridge of doom this will be a quick turnaround once bug problems straightened out let's go upstairs and see what we've got up there so this is the same corner on the first floor and uh, there's a little bit of damage there we're gonna have to provide curtains on all these places going forward that's like something that's happened 15 years ago when i first got in real estate tenants always would provide their own uh curtains and hangers now no one does that so we've got to put them in all of our places this is one of my more favorite rentals when it comes to the construction style this place is 3200 square feet four bed two bath i bought it for forty three thousand dollars. it's been a pretty decent money maker up till coronavirus and coronavirus has just killed us in my whole portfolio in between lost rents evictions all that stuff i've probably lost a quarter of a million dollars my a uh, 35,000 EIDL loan doesn't cut it. And that's a loan. It's not like they gave me that money. Yeah, we're gonna have to put build an enclosure here, which that was a complaint from the tenant of they wanted an enclosure here and it was never done. You wanna go up into the attic of mystery? It seems real sketchy. It is really sketchy. It's like the houses that we looked down in Cincinnati. Most of these places could have a full third story on them if we wanted to truly, truly open them up. For this neighborhood, building a full third story doesn't make sense. We'd get an extra 500 square feet. Let's go over to the next unit. These are the ones where they were selling dope out of. We called the cops on them, threatened to evict them. We were probably 30 days from evicting them in February and March of 2020, and then we lost that legal ability. So this is what we dealt with. We were having regular inspections done on the property. They were kind of taking care of it. One of my poor neighbors here, the neighbor started calling me saying that they have people on camera going in and out of this place just nonstop. So this is the totally unrehabbed side. So what you saw on the other side is what this looked like to an extent when I bought this place. It's just a big dumpy rental. And my intention today was to go through here and figure out is it going to cost more or less than $25,000 to fix this. We were at a point where materials were a lot higher than they are now, but the price of a two by four as of the recording of this video is $3.75. If you look, the, the floor pan for the shower is completely shot. So that's non-recoverable. We start a rehab on a project like this. It gets half away, 70% done. Somebody calls me. They're in a bad point in life. They need housing and they offer to finish the house up for me. I say, okay, that's fine. It's safe and livable. We'll finish it for you, Brandon. It's upsetting to me because this at one time was a big, gorgeous house. Back when the railroad was running through, the condition of these neighborhoods just got worse and worse and worse. I can't believe this bathroom's this bad shape. This is insane. Till we were doing regular inspections on this place, till coronavirus. It doesn't take a rocket surgeon to say, oh, that would never pass inspection. Of course it wouldn't. Neither would the stupid big old hole in the floor. Look at that. Further cements my point of this place was fine and it was passing inspections till coronavirus. Oh, whoa. Nice. Got some ammunition today. Look at all the mice crap here too. It's amazing that people will live like this. Well, all right, we're going on to the next disaster. Yeah, the store shouldn't be open. This is my train station. The one that I did a video on was like one of my first YouTube videos ever. They're my only tenant in here. So that door should not be open. This is not a good part of town and I run into consistent problems with people coming in and staying, which is not supposed to be the case. All the tenants on the second floor will be out of here. 
that's locked, which it should be locked. Um, locks are for only for honest people, just for reference. This is the standard apartment in my train station. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's sickening, but my question is how long has it been sitting here? That wasn't sitting here the last time I was here. So my concern is people are getting into this place, but I mean, I, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe. But I feel like this isn't too bad of an apartment. 300 bucks a month or $250 a month. Terrible neighborhood, but you know, we put flooring in it in both the bedroom or the kitchen, the bathroom. I put new carpet in here, one tenant ago, 300 bucks, and the guy that had it disappeared. So um, rather than me fight with the neighborhood, I'm just planning on selling it. Um, um, at least that's my intention. It's like, okay, there's cigarettes here. There's a glass thing. I don't know. It doesn't look like drug paraphernalia, thankfully. This door is still locked. So it's just, this upsets me. We had a whole video series on redoing the train station. And then what happened was I wasn't able to get in here on a regular basis and video in it. And it's like, well, do I rent out it out and make $2,000 a month or bring in $2,000 a month? Or do I just go ahead and uh, do a YouTube video on it? And I chose the other one. But the original YouTube video did absolutely terrible. I think 500 people watched it. So yeah, that door should never be open. Should never be unlocked yet it's unlocked i got a broken wind broken windows oh it's miserable absolutely miserable all right let's go on we'll go on to the next disaster this depresses me too much so i figured you know at the start of the video that it would be a metaphorical rat instead of literal rats in that house so that sucks i think that we're getting the contractor crew to work a lot ba better a lot faster um which will be good we've got to make some money from coronavirus uh, post coronavirus like i said my loss is probably a quarter million dollars at this point and that's not good because i've got people that want to buy my whole entire real estate portfolio and i could make millions of dollars off that let's be honest so i'm trying to count weigh the pros and cons of selling out, making a bunch of money and keeping the portfolio and um, doing what I've been doing for the past nine years as a full-time real estate investor. So let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think, what would you do if you were me? Would you keep having these cheap rentals? Would you liquidate them and get something nicer? Would you liquidate everything you have and just say, lay on the beach or, you know, I, I guess we do have a beach here in Ohio. I could lay on uh, Lake Erie Beach. So let me know in the comment section what you would do if you were in my case. Thank you guys. And please consider liking and subscribing if you already haven't.